when are you going home? I'll still be a foreigner. They'll all start pointing at me. Bye -bye. Hey YouTube, Alex here. Before I get into today's video, I wanna thank each and every one of you who has been subscribed to my channel for a while. It really means a lot to me that you've continued to support me through the early days. And I also would like to welcome all the new subscribers. We're getting close to 900. I plan to do a live stream when we hit that 1000 mark. If you're new and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel down below. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey YouTube, Alex here, and I am enjoying a sunny day in Hot Yai, Thailand. Why does the term expat make sense? First reason is that we are not immigrants. Immigrants, in my experience, are seeking to attain permanent residence leading to citizenship probably 80% of the time back in the US. All of my friends there would like to become US citizens. I have some friends that have actually become US citizens and that's their desire and goal. It's not to be in this in-between state. With citizenship, they'll get voting rights, a passport. My own grandmother attained citizenship in the US and it was clear to me from speaking with her that she didn't want to be in this in-between state. She wanted the privileges and powers that come with citizenship. US citizens can come and go as they please, whereas a lot of the expats I know, there are restrictions and limitations on them coming and going. They may have to do a special report periodically. They may be limited on the amount of times they can leave and re-enter in a calendar year. In some cases like the Philippines, if they stay over six months, they have to get an exit clearance before they leave. It's not the come and go policy that citizens have. For me, being a US citizen, I can come and go anytime I want. For my friends who are immigrants in the US who don't yet have citizenship, they may be limited on entering certain countries if they're still running on the passport of their home country, which is likely to not have the same strength as the U.S. passport. Additionally, I've seen disputes in immigrant communities where the lack of citizenship has allowed for unsavory actions to take place. I'm going to try to be vague about this. You are more vulnerable as an immigrant than as a citizen. Some would disagree with that. If you look at the U.S. homeless population, some would heavily disagree with that. I've had to live in my car in the past and so I can relate to that. The number two point, we are not travelers. In the case of my six months in Chiang Mai, I was not traveling in Chiang Mai for six months. I had an apartment lease. I had restaurants I was a regular at. I sought various services that are time consuming. I was also a member of a gym for the duration of my stay there. So it wasn't really like I'm exploring Chiang Mai and the surrounding regions every day. I was just trying to live my normal day-to-day -day life. Get up, go work out, study, learn about different things online, stay in touch with friends, have an established social life, and a lot of things that you can't really do if you're just in a place for a week. I have no problem with traveling. I love traveling. Obviously, I would not have discovered this lifestyle if I was not a travel lover. Even so, I just don't think it's exactly right to categorize expat as traveler. Can expats travel? Sure, absolutely. I've traveled all around Thailand, but I don't look at myself as I'm here for a week, I'm here for two weeks. No, I've been in Thailand for nine months now. I've loved every minute of it. It. Additionally, traveling around a lot takes a lot of energy planning and for some older expats, maybe they've got some health issues, maybe they're just tired. They don't want to be running around all over the place. They want a fairly stable, consistent routine. It's been my experience that it's harder for me to develop a routine when I'm on the go. I find it a lot easier to do this when I'm staying in one place at a time. I'm one of those people that after a while I just get tired of moving around. I did not have a intense desire to leave Chiang Mai. I just got in this routine, this sense of comfort and stability. I didn't really want to run around. The number three point is that we are not digital nomads. I remember when I first came to Chiang Mai six years ago and my buddy said, oh yeah, all my buddies here are digital nomads. They're just bouncing from country to country, checking out different places, working online and living on tourist visas. I thought, wow, that sounds kind of suboptimal, especially because around that time, Thailand started to question people who were staying there on tourist visa after tourist visa. They let people know, hey, this is not our intent for the tourist visa. The intent for the tourist visa was for people to come and enjoy themselves for a modest duration of time and then to go back to their home country or go be a tourist in another country. It wasn't designed to have people living in Thailand for an extended period of time. And I think a lot of digital nomads ran into this issue where they visit a country so many times in a year or for a extended duration of time and the country says, hey, 
this isn't what this is supposed to be, you can't come back. Or we're giving you one last entry and then no more this year. As a side note, I also think it's kind of a pain to be moving every 30 days. I can't imagine you'll be able to make very deep relationships in that span of time. I also know that it's a hassle like, oh great, now I gotta go to the airport. Okay, do I have the visa or do I get visa on arrival? How am I gonna get from the airport to my hotel? Okay, do I wanna stay in a hotel for a month where there's gonna be a transient population and people are gonna be coming and going, checking in and out, not gonna really get to know my neighbors in the same way that I might at an apartment building. The best gains in life come from compound interest. I like to find a few restaurants I love and cycle through them. Having to do that every month sounds at times annoying. You're also dealing with converting money every month. Can I calculate exactly how much I'm gonna need for this month or am I gonna have leftover currency that I can't do anything with until the next time I come back to this country and who knows when that will be. Also, you're probably not gonna be dating seriously if you're just bouncing from country to country every month where I think a lot of expats do wanna pursue a romantic relationship in their new country. Certainly not all, I've definitely talked to some that are not interested in that. I myself am not in a relationship. That's something to think about. If you're wanting to date seriously, but you're leaving in two weeks, I think there's potential for disagreement or misunderstandings there. Another one would be needing to get a new SIM card. So you're not able to build up those habits and routines as a digital nomad in the same way that you are as an expat. Number four is that we are not locals. Now, a lot of people, they get angry when I say this, oh, you think you're better than locals. That's not the case at all. And I'm gonna give you a great example right here. In America, I am part Japanese. In Japan, I am a foreigner. I am not part Japanese in Japan. There is no part Japanese. There are people in Japan who have lived their entire lives in Japan that are half Japanese. My mother was half Japanese who will never be regarded as Japanese. They may speak fluently and understand Japanese culture very well. There's still gonna be some level of question. I've heard some of these individuals have trouble getting an apartment for rent. I'm sure some could struggle to get a job in some cases. The definition of local versus foreigner is very clearly defined in homogenous societies or monocultural societies. You're not going to just be accepted as a local just because you've lived there for a while. I've heard of expats in Japan being asked, what are you going home? In some cases, these people have lived there for 20 years and they're still being asked, are you going home next year? Are you ready to go home? And so there is a sense you're not being accepted. Now, I'm not gonna extrapolate that to everywhere. Certainly your mileage may vary. Some people are gonna feel very accepted by their local community in some countries or cities and others not so much. This idea that all expats think they are superior is just projection. Now, do some have that negative attitude? Sure. That's why I don't agree with the projection. Oh, you just use the term expat because you think you're better. No, it's not that. I don't think that's reasonable or fair. Certainly some expats are bad actors. I mentioned that Swiss gentleman who has had his visa revoked and is getting thrown out of Thailand. But there are many great expats that don't make the news. Bad news is exciting for a lot of people, unfortunately. Good news is not so exciting. I think that reality is neutral. Anytime I get around a group of young Thai people by happenstance, maybe there's a school field trip going by or a group of young guys on motorbikes, they'll all start pointing at me, falang, 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 falang. Doesn't offend me, doesn't hurt my feelings. Would it be appropriate for me to go up to them and start saying, oh no, I'm a Thai person. How dare you? How dare you? Not at all. That's ridiculous. Now, would it be fair for me to go up to these young Thai students and start telling them, hey, how dare you? Don't you call me Falang? I'm a Thai person. Rah, 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 rah. No, that's ridiculous. I'm a Falang, I'm a foreigner. Even if I stay here in Thailand for the rest of my life, I'll still be a foreigner. That's just the way they see it and I don't have a problem with that. If I were to go to a different part of Thailand where nobody recognized me, nobody knew who I was, I would still be a Falang. And I think that it's wrong to project Western morality on non-Western cultures. It's wrong for anybody to say, this is how we do it in the West, or this is how they should do it in Thailand. I totally disagree. I like Thailand the way it is. I have no interest or intent of changing anything about it. I came to Thailand to change myself and not the other way around. The fifth and final point here is that it would be ridiculous to say, person who is from North America or Western Europe living in another country, every time we wanted to refer to expat. 
I'm not gonna say this not digital nomad or this not traveler is staying long-term in another country. It's for expedience. We use these terms to efficiently communicate ideas. And something else that came up in my comments, and I can't recall the exact name of the user who mentioned this, although it's getting hard with all of you wonderful new subscribers to keep track of who all is saying what. I greatly appreciate it. But he said, expat is not short for expatriate. It's short for expatriate, as in expats are not people who unilaterally don't like their home country. They've simply moved to a different country. There's nothing about patriotism in there. I love America. I hope the best for America. I am concerned for the well-being and success of my friends back home in the U.S. I don't, oh, I'm, America's this and that. No, I have friends back there. I have plenty of friends back there that I want to continue to be successful, to lead happy and fulfilling lives. And my choice to leave has everything to do with my individual circumstances and is unrelated to the merits or demerits of the U.S. <music>